We grieve the loss of our friend, mother, and grandmother. And so we need your loving arms to wrap around us and give us the strength that we need today and in the days to come. And also, we come here to say thank you. Thank you for the time that each of us had with Dandy as part of our lives. And so this afternoon, we want to celebrate the life that she led. And we want to celebrate her completing the race that you had before her. And God, I ask that you would be here in this moment, now as we grieve together, and as we celebrate the life of Dandy. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can go ahead and take a seat. Danny passed away Sunday, March 19th, 2023. She was the daughter of Fortuoso Taganan and Julita Vocales, where she grew up in a family of 10 kids. She was also the loving wife of Manny Diaz, with whom she shared 18 wonderful years. She was the mother to four children, Mavet, Avamela, Marisol, and Dustin, and the stepmother to three more, Vivian, Lisa, and Michael. She was also a grandmother to four grandchildren, Zinia, Yenzo, Victor Gabriel, and Victor Miguel, and step-grandmother to two step-grandchildren, Christopher James and Dominic. She was also a loving friend to so many more, as you can see with all of you here in this room today. We are here today to celebrate this woman, whom we all loved so much, and also to celebrate the relationship she had, not just with each of us, but also with her Heavenly Father. And so as we celebrate Dandy today, at some point, there'll be a great way to remember her through sharing stories and memories you may have of her and how she impacted our lives. And so towards the end of our time together, I just want to let you know that anyone will have the opportunity to come forward and share some specific stories and memories of your time with Dandy. But before that, I'd like us just to share some of the words of King David from God's Word. I think it will help us today as we both honor and remember Dandy well. This is from Psalm 23. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me to the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Dandy is indeed in this very moment dwelling in the house of the Lord. And as we grieve this afternoon, it's also critical to remember that she is now with Jesus, with her Savior. As I was getting prepared for today, I was sitting down with Manny, and he would show me many of the pictures and tell me many stories. And even without knowing Dandy, there was one word that came to mind. I thought of Dandy's life. Just one word that I felt like exemplified who she was so much. And that was the word love. And I don't need to tell all of you that today because you experience her love. And you have your own love for Dandy as well. But in addition, Dandy loves so many other things. And as part of celebrating her today, we're going to celebrate some of the things that she loved and that were a part of her life. Dandy loved the Philippines. After all, she was born there in Cebu City into a family of ten. And even years later, she and Manny would always find ways to return and visit family and friends there as often as they could. Dandy loved dancing, particularly ballroom dancing, Latin dancing, and the tango. However, there was one dance that changed her whole life, because it's how she met her husband, Manny. They met at the Ivy Club in Lancaster, performing the rumba, the Spanish dance of love. And looking back now, we can see how God has this beautiful sense of humor. And he had so much in store for them than they could have even imagined during that first dance together, as they would later share 18 years of marriage. And thankfully, that wasn't Dandy and Manny's last dance. Dancing became a wonderful and fun shared hobby that they both enjoyed over the years. And not only did they enjoy dancing, but they didn't seem to care who else saw them enjoying dancing or where it was. Often, Dandy and Manny would just start to dance as live music was being played. This would happen so much on cruises or vacations or in their many travels that oftentimes people would even think they were part of the entertainment. They just loved dancing. They wouldn't let anything keep them off the dance floor. Not even the tango. Typically, this is a dance that would clear the floor because it's difficult and not many people can do it, but not Dandy and Manny. 
For them, the tango was an invitation to hit the floor together, even if they were alone. Whether it was abroad, whether it was at the Marriott or on a cruise, Danny and Manny always took the opportunity to dance together. Danny also loved traveling. As you can see from the many pictures that have been playing, and not just back to her home and her community in the Philippines, but all over the world. Her and Manny often traveled, and Danny would always make a point to connect with friends and even strangers along the way. Whether it was Singapore or Mexico or Belize, Honduras, the Bahamas, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Aruba, Spain, or France, Danny and Manny took the time to experience the world together through all of its different cultures and beauty. Danny also loved good food. Whether it was preparing it or just enjoying it, Danny knew how to make the most out of delicious food with their travels. She loved mangoes, specifically champagne mangoes. And one of the dishes she often prepared and was most loved by Manny and many friends was pancit, the rice noodle dish often paired with delicious pork, shrimp, and other meats. And maybe many of you have even shared that meal with Danny at some point. She loved learning. She spoke multiple languages to include Japanese, Spanish, and multiple Philippine dialects. She also earned a master's degree in health administration informatics. Danny loved to learn. She also loved dressing up for formal socials and functions and parties. Again, as you can see through many of the pictures that we've seen here today. Cultural dresses from the Philippines were some of her favorites. She never missed the opportunity to dress up, to dance, and to share the excitement of an evening or an event out with friends and with family. Danny also loved her church, LCBC. Her and Manny have been longtime members since some of the church's earliest days. They've seen it change, they've seen it grow. They were even part of the bikers ministry, they took many trips together on motorcycles with friends as well. But Danny didn't just love LCBC, she didn't just love her church, she also loved just the church in general, the worldwide church. She jumped into any chance to get to worship her savior with others especially in her many travels to the Philippines. Danny spent much time worshiping through prayer, reading the scriptures, and prayer groups and Bible studies with other people in her life. It's just a part of who she was. Danny also loved flowers and plants. At one point, Manny recalled counting and said that they had a total of 57 plants in their house. She loved bringing the Philippines home with her that way. But she also loved not just keeping the beauty of plants and flowers to herself. Manny recalls many trips to visit his mother in the Poconos where Danny would send flowers for his mother and so he would get in the car, he would make that drive, he would get out and give his mother the flowers and his mother in return would give him some flowers to take back to Danny as well. This idea of breathing life into things and seeing beauty and sharing that through flowers was not something Danny just kept to herself and it's also not something she just kept reserved for flowers and living things. Danny also had this way of just finding the positives in life and sharing that with other people. She was a natural at this. Some may even say she was an artist at this. It was almost a craft for her. But just like the beauty of those flowers and those plants, Danny didn't just keep all the positives to herself. She went out of her way to make others laugh and to make them smile, to show them and gently guide them to the positives in their own lives. Whether it was family or close friends or even strangers she met in all of her travels, Danny could always find a way to share the positives in life with them. This made Danny both radiant and magnetic to the people around her. She had this way of just pulling you in to see the positives in your own life. Many of you have experienced what I'm talking about firsthand as you've gotten to know Danny throughout the years. Yet perhaps maybe the most inspiring and compelling thing about this is that Danny's ability to see the positives endured, no matter what was going on around her, or what may have been happening in her own life. Even when life was really hard or challenging, and sometimes life was just that, even in the midst of cancer or a new pacemaker or a mini stroke or pneumonia, congestive heart failure or stage three kidney failure, Danny endured. But she didn't just endure, she found ways to make sure that positivity endured as well. Nothing could stop her from acknowledging that even in a world where there's pain and confusion and hurt and sorrow, there was also beauty, there was also life, there was also things to be extremely, extremely thankful for. And Danny's ability to find those positives and to continue to share them with others, despite what may have been going on around her or even to her own body, there's nothing short of inspiring 
and beautiful. No matter what happened to her, she was strong both spiritually and mentally. And she makes us all want to embody that in some way as well and have that kind of strength and positivity in our own lives. And she loved others. Perhaps among all the things she loved, this was the clearest. And even as I look out at this crowd today, that's so clear to me. Even growing up with a family of 10 other siblings, she was known for having this big heart. She was known for being gracious and caring, for not speaking unkindly to others, despite how they may have even treated her. Even if she had every reason to be unkind, instead it was kindness and it was love that defined who Dandy was. Whether it was a stranger or a close friend, Danny would just make you feel valued. She was a social butterfly, and it didn't matter where you were, she had friends all over the world. And yet she consistently made time in her travels and at home to love and to care for those friends. In preparing for the ceremony today, Manny showed me picture after picture, many of which you've seen today, of her friends abroad. Danny just found a way of constantly supporting and loving other people. And many of you are here today because of that, because of the relationship you had with her, because she found a way to do that in your life as well. Dandy also loved her family. She loved her children, Mavette, Aham, Mela, Marie, Sol, and Dustin. She loved her stepchildren, Vivian, Lisa, and Michael. She also loved her grandchildren, Xenia, Yenzo, Victor Gabriel, and Victor Miguel, as well as her step-grandchildren, Christopher James and Dominic. She loved her extended family as well, and so many of you as family are here today because of the love that she showed you. And yet it wasn't love she showed you just because you're family, it was love she showed you because you were you, because you're unique, because she could see the value in who you were, just for who you were, at the end of the day. And Dandy loved Manny. This was so evident, whether you knew them well or not. And Manny loved Dandy in return. When talking with Manny, he mentioned how Danny's positivity and strength was this light in his life, that her calming presence was such a gift to him, that over the years, she taught him so much. She made him laugh. She was a consistent source of adventures and travels together. She was the best dance partner he had. She helped keep him, really pointing him towards Jesus over the years as well, and that her love for him was a strong, it was consistent, and it was selfless. They truly lived and built and enjoyed a beautiful life and love together. Danny loved her husband, her family, and others. You didn't even have to know her to feel and see and experience this truth. And Danny loved Jesus. Jesus was not just a historical figure for Danny. Jesus was her savior. She had this personal relationship with him. And as sad as it is that we are no longer have Danny here with us, it's helpful for us to know that she is in the presence of her Savior right now. The Apostle Paul, one of the early church leaders, tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 1 and 6 through 8, For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die, when our earthly body is no more, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body, made for us by God himself and not by human hands. So we are always confident. Even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. For we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident. And we would rather be away from these earthly bodies. For then we will be at home with the Lord. In 2 Timothy 4.7, Paul again says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have remained faithful. And so today, as we're here celebrating Dandy's life, she also has fought the good fight. She's finished the race that God put in front of her. She's remained faithful for the journey that he had for her. And in this very second, she's in the presence of Jesus, who is her reward for eternity. And maybe you're here today because you don't know that God loves you the way that Danny understood. In Romans 8, 35 to 39, Paul again shares that there's nothing that can separate us from that love that Danny knew. The love that God had for her and really every one of us as well. Paul says it this way. He says, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or persecuted or hungry or cold or in danger or threatened with death? No. Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ, who loved us. 
And I am convinced that nothing can separate us from his love. Death can't and life can't. The angels can't and the demons can't. Our fears for today, our worries for tomorrow, even the powers of hell can't keep God's love away. Whether we are high above the sky or in the deepest ocean, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so as amazing as Danny's love was for each of us, and as amazing as your love was for her, Christ's love for all of us is even greater. His love is so great for us that he gave his life for every one of us, something we're even celebrating this weekend with Easter. Jesus' disciple John wrote words about this when it comes to Jesus. He said, for this is how God loved the world. That includes all of us. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. This love from God is unconditional. He'll love us even if we don't love him back. His love is available for all of us. And although it doesn't require a response for him to love us, he'd love nothing more for us to respond in believing in him and accepting the forgiveness that he offers us same forgiveness that Danny knew as well. Even though we're not perfect and we won't ever be in our time here on earth, God forgives us anyway. And for us, this is known as grace. And it's such a gift. Danny understood that grace. She let that grace change who she was. Many of us experienced grace through her because she had first experienced it through Jesus. And that's why even now, this weekend, with Easter, as we celebrate what God has done in our life, what no, but there's really no better time to celebrate the life of Dandy as well. She's experiencing firsthand the beauty of what happens when you accept Jesus. And she is in his presence in this moment. And so today, as we reflect on the love Dandy had for us and our love for her, we're also faced with our own humanity. And as we mourn for Dandy, what better time to realize in our own lives the most important thing is what Dandy had grabbed a hold of the love of Jesus. He died for us all. That we can really put our trust in him and his finished work on the cross. Not only can it change our eternity, it can change our lives now as well. And so maybe you're here today and you've been searching for something that's been missing in your life. Or maybe for you, you knew something was different about Danny, but you couldn't put your finger on it. And you might know now that perhaps it was the love of Jesus. And it affected how she loved you. And this love is available for all of us simply by talking to God, simply by asking for forgiveness and accepting the sacrifice he made. Dandy loves so much, and she's loved by so many. And we're able to celebrate her life today because we know that this is not the end for her. In fact, in many ways, this is just the beginning for Dandy. And now she is with Jesus forever. And those who are trusting Jesus for eternity will also see her again. This is not the end for your relationship with her as well. Your trust is in Jesus. And so we celebrate her finishing the race she ran so well. As I mentioned earlier, there's going to be a time now where you'll be able to come up and share some memories of Danny, some specific stories. They can be serious. They can be humorous. They can be anything that exemplified your relationship with her. But I'd like to welcome up Manny first to start our time sharing for Danny. Thank God. <laughs> 